care about the lilies, the birds, Father God, animals and plants. How much more, how much more do you care for us? So we thank you that we are loved by you, Father God. We are loved by you, we are loved by you, we are loved by you. <laughs> we are loved by you, Jesus. And you care for us. Thank you, Father. For this, we are grateful. So we thank you for each and every portion of this service on this morning. We thank you for your speak word, Father God. Your spoken word. We thank you that it will go deep, Father God. And not just tickle our ears, Father God. But that we will come, Father God, to realization that we have to change and rearrange. So that the work work mightily in us of today. And so we thank you for your man sermon that we'll be bringing forth your word. We ask, Father God, that we will, they will hear from you and you only, Father God. And as they deliver, Father God, souls will be delivered. Captives will be set free. And so we thank you. We thank you for the songs of Zion that will be sung. We thank you, Father God, as we lift up for your name and praise, Father God. The fruit of our lips giving you thanks. Father God, that you will be glorified. Be thou glorified in our lives and be glorified in the heavens and be glorified in the earth, Father. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. We glorify your name, Jesus. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory.
morning, oh God. And we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And now without further ado, we will go straight to the word of God, which will be brought to us this morning by my husband, none other than our own homegrown elder, Arthur William. Let's give him a big love, bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord be praised. Bless his mighty name be praised. For he is good. There's none like him. Stand before you this morning only by God's grace. Not in anything of myself. And so I trust God this morning. I trust him in everything. I like to give honor where it's due to my pastors, Oral and Heaven So I thank them for the opportunity to share the word of God today. So I got a bit to say, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in the preliminaries. Let me just pray for I gotta just thank you. For this time I submit myself to you, Lord God, to be used for your glory. Have your way. Let only, only what you have or want for your quicker hair this morning come out of my spirit this morning. Bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Now I have to touch on something before I get into the, to the word. They listen to the radio and you know there's sometimes different ministers coming from different relate, religions. And sometimes I listen a little bit before I change it, uh, where they're coming from, what they're saying. And this one thing that caught my attention, so this man was saying that the Bible is whitewashed and it's um, colonialism. And I got offended. But then I stopped. And I thought about what he was saying. And I said, you know what? There is some truth to what he's saying. And in the 21st century, the time is now for us to address this. Throughout all the congregations. Throughout all the congregations, we need to deal with the fact that this Bible speaks of a people that look like you and me totally in the majority and if we don't want to address this reality we're going to lose the young ones and we're losing them because they trying to hear about a blonde hair boy man you can't fool them no more they know it's a lie and it's not racism it's just what it is and we have to win them. How can we win them when we tell them this thing and they're looking at you like you're crazy? It's all on the internet, the, the, the information is there. You don't have to go run and buy a $2,000 book no more to get this information. All you got to do is click. And you come to find out who the blonde-haired white man was. And he was not Christ. So it has to be addressed respectfully, without any hate towards any race. But the truth is the truth and the word is the word and the people are being denied access to this kingdom because they will not accept this lie. And so when this man said that it's whitewashed and then he continued to speak about people of our color and he draw them to him in flax. Because they can identify, because why? Right? They see themselves. And when we look at this Bible, first of all, you know who King James was that wrote this Bible? He was a black man. Nobody don't tell you that. Nobody don't tell you that King James was a black man. And when you look at the picture, you see these white people, 
respectfully, no hate. But come on, if you're going to leave this religion because Jesus Christ was not a blonde haired blue eye man, and all I can say to you is the truth is not in you, and God is not in you. And it is a racist attitude because this Christ that we serve is not of our color. He died for all of us. He died for black, he died for white, he died for Chinese. Lord, I don't want to live by this, you know, but this is where my heart is. And we have to teach the youth the truth, or we're going to lose them. And you know where wrong it. And the reality is, I'm going to touch on some scriptures quickly because this book speaks about us in so many ways. And it's there plain and clear. And yet when you go into the cathedral and you see that these people and, and, the, and, and the stained glasses, you see everybody really white. When God helped me. And the reality is that they were in fact whitewashed. Because the original pictures were not such. And if you go to Egypt and Ethiopia today, you're going to see, you're going to see the Virgin Mary black. The original pictures. And how can we have our children denying this reality of their heritage and not knowing who and where they came from? Imagine that. How can we do that? And think we're doing a justice and a, and a right thing to our children. I think we need that close, you know. How can we do that? Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to just touch on a couple of scriptures because this Bible speaks about us throughout, throughout if you talk, if you study the geneal, genealogy, if you study the bloodlines, you talk about Ham, you speak about Judah, you speak about all these people, these people black like me and you, Kosh. The those guys that were building those this thing going some of them were bad, you know. I mean it wasn't good. But a lot of it was black against black. Egyptians and the Israelites, they were all black people. Somebody gotta tell them. Who gonna tell them? When they're running around, they go run to the Rasta man then they can't say praise ya. Uh -huh. I and I Rastafari. Watch me and identify with me because they see themselves. And when they see themselves, the spirit is pulled to that. Back in the days, it was, it was the Muslims that were dealing with our issues as a people while you were enslaved. Respectfully, I ain't hating on nobody. And, and, and they drew millions of our brothers and sisters. Because why? They could relate to themselves and see themselves. And who is telling them that in the book of Revelation 1, 14, 15, it speaks about the Christ himself. And it tells us that the hairs of his head were white. White like wool. Like snow. Who have woolly hair? Like wool. It tells you what's in there. Mm -hmm. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet were like unto fine grass, as if they were burned in a furnace. They go down to say that his voice was like the sound of many waters. But when the young guys come in and they don't hear these things, and they see these pictures, and let the Holy Spirit himself touch their spirit and draw it because you know that you know that you know. When your spirit feels this God, you don't get concerned with all of that. But the fact is, I wish some of them young guys were here today to hear this. Because the fact is that's why some of them don't want to sit down with this thing. Because when they sit down and they close their eyes to pray, all they see is this guy. And the Bible telling you who it is and they need to close their eyes and see. A man whose hair 
was like wool, woolly and wool's feet were like burnt grass. And know that this is the God, this is the Elohim that they are praying to. And he looked just like you. And he looked just like me. And he loves everybody. He don't differentiate against races, but we have to tell our youth that this is the God that we serve and praying to. That's in the Bible. Daniel 7 states it also, and he said, the hair of his head like the pure wool. And you want to set up people got hair that like wool. You know where I'm wrong it? And and you gotta understand that it's it's not a mistake, it's a systemic thing. To change this whole visual thing. You see a picture is worth more than a thousand words and it does and have its effect on people. My goodness. Revelation two eighteen speak about the same thing again, this is three different verses that speaking about Christ, you know, and it's telling you what he looked like. It says, who has eye like a flame of fire, on whose feet are like burned, brandish bronze. Okay? So the three of them things speak about the Christ himself. So it's in there. So why, why, why do all ministers throughout the world shy away from teaching this truth? And revealing this reality to the world, especially the black churches. I don't know if it has something to do with, with the 501c, if, 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 you, if you speak these things. I don't know if it's some kind of colonialistic. I don't know, but it don't make sense to me. Do I have to preach? If I can't speak about these things, I can sit on that chair and I can tell my brothers and they can tell the youth them and they can school, I can tell the children them. And the children come and my, my purview and they hear this thing. I show them all about Mansa Musa and I show them the history. You think they were getting music alone for me or life? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why are they going to fire me? Oh Hallelujah. And then when we go out to ask, Ask Paul, Paul speak about him. Paul, the, 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 nah, this, I don't suppose you did two minutes with this, I'm going to show you thing. The Romans saw Paul, you know Paul? The, the, the greatest evangelist, a, a disciple, apostle in the Bible. You know when you see him on the wall and thing, you don't see, you don't see what, you don't see what he looked like for real, you know. But the Romans saw Paul, and you know what they say? Aren't you that Egyptian? If you don't believe me, you could turn to, you could turn to Acts 21, 38 to 40. I'm not going to go through it for the sake of time. And read it for yourself. And share it with your children. And show them. Show them their heritage. And show them their lineage. And show them their connection to this, to this book. That they come up here and they take, they take it about Job. It's about their history. It's who they are. Descendants of kings and queens. Really connected to the Christ himself. Then Exodus, and that's the last one I touched on. But there's so much more in the Bible. When they did it, they're going to do a whole thing and just, just black people in the Bible because there's so much. So much. So how can we have a, a cathedral filled with Caucasians? And how can that be okay? It's not okay. I said to all the ministers in the purview of my voice that it is not okay. And it must be addressed. The time to address it is now. And it's not anything about hate. My God. Moses saved Jacho's children, daughter, from some guys. Moses, you know, Moses, right? Excuse me. He the one that part the Red Sea and all that, because he was mightily. Now, hey, what is Moses? He went into the wilderness and, and he saved Jacho's daughter. And so Jethro's daughter ran back to her father. And you know what she said to him? You can look it up. I will give you the word, but I'm not going to go into all of it because of the time. Exodus 2, 19. 
Exodus 2.19. She went up to her father, Dad, 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 an Egyptian saved me. An Egyptian saved me. So you can say all of that to say this. You know what it's washing in this. You know what it's washing in it. It's all in here. So there's no need to run to Jarrah Safari. Because till I see I came to Jamaica and he told them, you know, I am not God. He told them with all his own mouth. But Marley in his latter years from Christ, they will tell you that. And he went to the African Methodist Church and was saved. Okay? Selassie I was a great leader, also man of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the only continent in Africa that was not ever colonial, colonialized or conquered. It's man was awesome. But he told them himself that he is not God. But they made a religion out of him. And so where are those millions of brothers and sisters that worshiping him going? Are they going to the one and only true and living God when they die? Are they going to be in heaven with us sitting and, and reveling around the throne of God? Where are they going is the question. And how can we take it lightly not to tell the truth? It is the word of God. The children of Ishmael. Again, I hear, I listen to them, and they, 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 I feel grieved in my spirit sometimes. How they blaspheming my God. Some of them make mockery while they're preaching. We don't go out and make a mockery at nobody, we just preach the word of God. And we speak about his love towards men and so forth. And they're speaking some things that is painful to listen to. But I listen so that I can respond and so that I can grow and know where, where the thought and the mindsets are at. What's out there? Hallelujah. I'm going to leave the children of Ishmael alone. I'm going to leave the Muslims them alone. Wonderful people, loving people. I'm going to leave them alone for now. But I must say this much. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, original name, is Lord. He is the King of Kings. There is no other God but Him. There is none higher than Him. And the time will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that this Christ that we serve is Lord. And I want to be one confessing his Lord and going up, not confessing his Lord and being thrown in the fire. And so we have to teach this too. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word for today, I'm going to go through this quick. It's finished. It is finished. Christ hung on the, on the cross. And his last word was, it, it's finished. John 19, 30 says. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. This barbaric execution that Jesus suffered is summed up in three words. It is finished. In his book, The Day Christ Died, the bishop conveys the horror of such an execution. He writes the execution. The executioner laid the cross being behind Jesus and brought him to the ground quickly by grasping his arm and pulling him backward. As soon as Jesus fell and the beam was fitted under the back of his neck and on each side, soldiers quickly knelt on either side of the elbow. The thorns pressed against his torn scalp. With his right hand, the executioner probed the wrist of Christ to find the little hollow spot where he, when he found it, 
he took one of the square cut iron nails, he raised the hammer over the nail and boom, brought it down with force into the hand of our Lord. Hmm. Can you imagine the body must have rigid and taking the pain? When the crossbeam was set firmly, the two soldiers hurried to help and each one took hold of a leg at the calf. The ritual was to kneel the right foot over the left, and this was probably the most difficult part of the work. If the feet were pulled downwards and the nails close to the foot of the cross, the prisoner always died quickly. Over the years, the Romans learned to push the feet upwards on the cross so that the condemned man could lean on the nails and stretch himself upwards just to try to catch a breath. So while he's stretching his foot upwards to try to catch a breath, he has to push on these nails and the excruciating pain. So imagine you're gasping and you're pushing and you're gasping and this, the pressure. Job Swindle adds, excruciating pain accompanied every upward push for breath and every downward release from fatigue. What a cruel way to kill a man, eh? The Roman was up there, you know. Oh Lord, somebody think they, they, they think about doing for torturing people. There, there's, there's, this is an aside. They used to sometimes tie the dead man to the person and let the body rot while they were walking around with a dead body on them. And they would tie the dead body to the person who they want to punish. And it makes you wonder what manner of mind could contemplate these kind of things. What manner of creature is a human? My goodness. Each moment cut deeper into the bone and tendons and ram muscle. Feverly, fever inevitably set in, inflaming the wounds and creating an insatiable church to make the toxin. Waves of hallucination drifted. The victim in and out of conscious he would go. And in time, the flies and other insects found their way to the open wound. At this point, Jesus knew he had accomplished everything the Father had sent him to do. To fulfill one last scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. When Jesus, did, Jesus therefore had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Realize he gave it up, they didn't take it. The said three words that is finished come from one big word, tetelestal, the word tetelestia is unfamiliar to us but it was used by various people in everyday life in those days. A servant would use it when reporting to his or her master, saying, I have completed the work assigned to me. John 17, 4 says, When a priest examined an animal sacrifice and found it faultless, this would be, this word would apply. The word means it's finished, and it always will be finished. It stands finished. These words specify not the end of Jesus' life, but the completion of a task. He came to fulfill a task. The verb tense is perfect. It is finished. The purpose of this hour has been completed, and the consequences of his work are enduring forever. Max Lucado writes, the history-long plan of redeeming man was finished. The message of God to man was finished. The works done by Jesus as a man on earth were finished. The task of selecting and training ambassadors was finished. The job was finished. The song had been sung. The blood had been poured. The sacrifice had been made. The sting of death had been removed. It was over. Robin Webb says, perhaps the most meaningful meaning of that the last time was that used by the mer was that used by the merchants. The debt is paid in full. The debt is paid in full. When he gave himself on the cross, Jesus met 
the righteous demands of a holy law. He paid our debt in full. Hallelujah. 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 What did we learn about the salvation that Jews says was once all delivered to the saints? Jesus' word is finished, provides for us full glorious benefits. It was an atonement for sin. sin. But the rich writes, none of the Old Testament sacrifices could take away sins. Their blood only covered sin, but the Lamb of God shed in blood. And that blood can take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. His blood takes away the sins of the world. He purged our sins. First John 1, 7, but we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sins. What a work he has done. In the word says, and while we are having this fellowship with him, the blood of Jesus, his son, keeps constantly cleansing us from sins of omission, sins of ignorance, sins we know nothing about in our lives. And for the reason that we have not grown in grace enough to see that they are sin. He's covering all of this by the work that he did. These will prevent our fellowship with God if the divine provision of the constant cleansing away of the defilement of our sins in our life was not taken care of by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So holy is the God with whom we have fellowship. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the, through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, clean your conscience, cleanse your conscience from the dead works of the living God. Revelation 1, Four and five, four John. John says to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who he is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn born from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Ephesians 1 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. He conquered death. He goes to nine. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death crowned with the glory and honor, that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. He did it for everyone. Everyone. All are we, black, white, brown, green. He did it for everyone. And so the gospel should be preached for everyone. John MacArthur writes in his commentary on Hebrews, we see the extent of Christ's humiliation in his death. Angels cannot die, but Jesus came to die. He went so far beneath the angel that he did something that, couldn't, that the angels could never do. His death was not easy or costless. A lot of people like to say salvation is free. But the price that was paid, the price that he paid, if we stop and we listen to what we're talking about here today, you get a little glimpse of the sacrifice that he, he made. It wasn't an easy one. It was painful. It was a suffering death. Christ's exit from the land of the living was not calm and peaceful. But it was accompanied by outward torture and inner agony. Understanding all the painfulness of the, the nail, the spiritual separation. We can't imagine because we never, none of us never walked so close with God, but he, him and God was one. And he had to be totally separated from this, this bliss, this, this oneness, this level of being above everything and that separation in itself you know when you break up from your girlfriend or your boyfriend how it hurt especially you've been together a long time and now i ain't together no more regardless of what the reason is it's a painful thing they're going through 
So imagine Christ, who was there in all eternity with the Godhead, separated now for you and for me. And we think it is, it's, 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 salvation is free. I run into a brother one time in, in um, a friend in, in Home Depot, we had this conversation. Because he was all upset. He was so upset. William, William, who, who, why I want to have TD Jakes coming down here and, and they want people to pay all this kind of heap of money. Where you got to pay all this money? Don't go to see TD Jakes. And salvation is free. And I don't want money. They are the church want money. I said, well, man, hold up, hold up, hold up. Tell me something. If you go away to see Usher and they charge you $250, you won't pay. That's it. Beyonce, pork in a cave and Five hundred dollars a pop. So why is why you feel you should pay for that? But a man of God who's gonna save your soul and change your whole life around. It's a, it's a be free. They should have been free. The one I done with him. <laughs> I will with you on that one. I will talk to you. Yeah, we will talk again. But he know he don't he know what I'm talking about. Because every time they come to the gospel, they're supposed to be free. The church has all our money. Again, at mother school I had a conversation with this woman. And she was like, you don't know what you're about. I mean I'm perfect with him now. I love him lad. You know William, all the church wants is money. And I, and I don't believe that you should have to give no money to the church. Because all they want is money. Come as I say, well okay. I, got, I see your point, but tell me something. How oh, the church is going to stay open if you don't have money? And who going to pay it? They expect the pastor to, to pay everything himself because he's the pastor of the church. How, how are we going to feed the sick? How are we going to do the works of God if we don't give our money? And what is wrong with giving money to such a worthy cause? Is this a cause worth giving money to? We're talking about your eternal soul. We're talking about the homeless. We're talking about those on the street that need to hear the word of God. We're talking about someone that needs clothes. We're talking about ministering Christ. We're talking about bringing life eternal. So what wrong with giving you two cents to it? What's wrong with that? Okay, we will going to talk to you. I will talk to you. No problem. You guess what? That in their spirit now, I ain't going no place. And God pulling and talking on them. Every time they see me, they're thinking about that. Right. Because what we don't say makes sense. They ain't they no big spiritual Holy Ghost nothing. They just sense how the church going to stay open if we don't give our money to the church to support it. It's not his church or her church, it's our church. This is where we fellowship together. This is our house. This is our house. And it's our duty to make sure that this house stays. And it's our duty, if not here, to find a place because it's ours. So the sheep be scattered. Thank God. How I get it? Oh, I get John MacArthur writes in his commentary on Hebrews, we see the extent of Christ's humiliation in his death. I said that already. In his death, I said that already. The death he tested was the cause of sin. It wasn't no peaceful death, it wasn't calm. What Jesus felt while dying on the cross was the total agony of every soul in hell for all eternity put together. So far in a few hours, all the punishment for all the sin of all time. That was the depth of his death. He was guilty of no sin, yet he suffered all sin. God sent his son and his son willingly came to die to redeem you and me. Hallelujah. 
But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order that he might redeem those who were under the law. Jesus Christ in his death proposed to die as a substitute for everyone. And it is only by the son tasting death as a man, for man, that we are free from death. He made us free from death. Imagine that. Historically, kings have had someone taste their food to protect them from possibly poisoning. The cup of poison that belonged to us was drained to the dregs by Jesus Christ. He substituted his own death for ours and released us to live with God. What a transaction. We get the better part of it. Ephesians 6. Oh, yeah. Ephesians 6. For he himself, Ephesians 2, 14, 16. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. So in Christ we are no preachers. Yes. That's a whole other subject there, I could tell you too, that we don't realize the reality of what, what that transaction and who we are. We are no, we are no, we are not we really human no more, you know. But it's to, it's to delve into that. That's another, that's another thing. Yeah. And that he might be consigned them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Colossians 1.19 For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh to death, to present you holy, and blameless and above reproach in his sight. That's a lot, you know, what I just said. But basically what I do, I try to paraphrase it. In his sight, because of the work that he has done, he can present us to God, holy and blameless. Despite the nonsense that we're still dealing with. When he stands before God, and he said, Williams, mm -hmm. he says, holy and blameless. Holy. You, because of the blood that covers us. They don't see us, but they see the blood of Christ. This is some deep stuff. We have access to the Holy of Holy now because of this crucifixion that took place, this transaction. I just want to say, you know what, let me spend some time and get into the depth, the deeper things of this transaction and I found this word and I'm kind of paraphrasing some of it and using it. I'm going to give the brother some credit here. Steve Hereford. This is basically what he was saying and I'm using this as a vehicle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we have access to the Holy of Holies. Because of Christ's death, we have access to God. No one was allowed to the Holy of Holies but the High Priest on the Day of Atonement which are called once a year. This was in the Old Testament. The Day of Atonement which are called on the tenth day of the seventh month was to serve as a reminder that the daily, weekly and monthly sacrifices made at the altar of burnt offering were not sufficient to atone for our sins. Hebrews 10, 11 and every priest stand there ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never fully take away our sins. And God Christ came and took it away once and for all. This high priest first sanctified himself by taking a ceremonial bath and putting on white garments. So this priest had to, he was a priest, but said he had to prepare himself. And he had to set himself apart or herself apart. The burden of mostly men to be present to present themselves as a sacrifice 
And, and the word speaks also that if they were not clean, they would die as they go into the Holy of Holies. Some of them would die. This is how serious this stuff was. They pulling out a dead man. Because he went in there with something that he didn't get clean up out of him. He could something. Thank God for his blood. God was in turn thrown on the mercy seat in the sanctuary, but no person, no one could approach it except through the media. Who? Through the mediation of the high priest who offered the blood of sacrifice. After sacrificing a bullock, the high priest chose a goat. Hallelujah. He chose a bullock for the sin offering and sacrificed it. Then he sprinkled his blood on about around the mercy seat. Finally, the scapegoat bearing the sins of the people was sent into the wilderness. This scapegoat symbolized the pardon for sin brought to the sacrifice. So that's what we get a talk from scapegoat. Yeah, people want to be a scapegoat. They want him to take all the blame for it, something. And they're not telling you to it, but they're going to pop you in front and say, yeah, Williams, you go. They will hear you that he's the one that they go. They send you up front of him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At the name of the Lord, he prays. You don't have to deal with that no more. And so we get to a place where we can say, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, Death, where is your sting? Or he is where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gave us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. See, he took the law and he nailed it. And, and some, of, some of these people coming back out and they try to go back into the law. And they come in and they want to put all this stuff back on you. They come to realize now that, that we are in fact, they say they walk, they walk. And so now they come to realize that, quote-unquote, we are the children of Israel, and we are the true Israelites. Thank you. And they decide now that we have to go back into the old days and go back into the law. And that's a, that's a, that's a, what do all that they use? A religion that's taking you throughout America. And it's getting the young black men, the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. And it's growing. If you go and you Google them and you see those brothers look so awesome and so powerful, and they have this dignity about them when you see them moving in the roads, because now they know who they are. And they're walking with the head up and they know that I am a, I am the true Israelites. I am a descendant of Abraham. And this book was talking about me and they got and they galvanizing around this thing. And this way I'm, I said what I said earlier, that we have to we have to preach us as a people in this Bible, we have to reveal it to the younger generation or we will lose them. We can't play, we can't play them kind of games no more and the blonde hair, blue eye, nobody. We just can't play it no more. And see our brothers and sisters joining up with all these kind of things and some of them so filled with hate because now they find out this truth about themselves and they want revenge. I am not in Bible telling me that vengeance is mine. I will repay. And some of them are my friends. We sit and we read them. They can't shake me because I know whom I believe and I know I, I know I have a relationship. I know God. But a young person coming in don't know him like that. And they can really be shaking because they see him. They're going to see that this ain't true. And when they say, look at this, this is you. How come they tell you that? 
Like I'll tell you I heard the radio. They say in the way, watch the whole book. And it's a colonialist, colonialistic book. And everybody write in the Bible, that's what they're saying. To our children. And they're drawing them in droves. Because when you do the research, and they go and they show them the research, and they see the original pictures of Christ, they see the original pictures of Mary, and they see that they were in fact black people. And they want to think that this is a lie. But they say no lie, it's in here. It's in here. It's in here. Regardless of who write what or who paid what, it's in here. Read it for yourself and identify with this Christ who loved you and who died for you. Somebody got to tell them or we're going to lose them. I watch them and I feel pro when I watch them. Young black men, chest up in the air, moving in droves, thousands of them. Identifying with their root are the Israelites. And the children of God spoken about in the Bible. And we try to deal it that wrong it because we don't want to hurt nobody feeling and we lose in our brothers, we lose in our children. They have to deal with it because the book is speaking about us. They get to take part in it. It's what it is. You are invited to take part in it, but it's about us. And if you don't tell them that, what they see is it, it's about them. And they brought us over here, and we were all foolish last slaves. Not again, again. We did not know we were dumb, we were stupid. You are savages. That's what they trying to teach us and tell us. To lie. We built the pyramids. We have technology and knowledge that the world can't even find anymore because they killed us. Instead of learning from us. And they went to Africa to learn. In Alexandria they learned about. Oh my God. They learn mathematics, they learn reading, they learn technology, they learn philosophy from us. Black people, if we don't tell our children this, when they're telling us that we were slaves, we're going to lose them. And it's all in here. Thank God. Let me go back and finish. Let me go back and finish. And it's all out there. It's clear, you know, why you do click on your and your phone and come up. My goodness. And I stand in amazement at these Egyptians and the great things that they did. And then I can't believe that they're trying to make me think I was a slave. When they brought my ancestors over here, they were already writing mathematics. Equation that they can't even figure out up to today. Anyway, I'm Muslim. So, Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled we shall receive by his life and not only that but we also rejoice in god to our lord jesus christ yeshua mm -hmm. to whom we have now received the reconciliation so he brought us back in this word reconciliation to return to favor with to receive one into favor to put someone into friendship with god that he's now our friend that's where we stand with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, brethren, he would stand. Have been born is to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us. He consecrated this was to the veil that is his flesh. And having a high peace over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience 
and our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah. This guy did, did he did a walk for us, you know. Yes. He did a walk for us. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The time of need is the time to come. In time of need is not the time to run. Even though you might think this is fun, I think this is what I run. Before it's done. <laughs> but the time of need is the time yes, to come. Yes, yes, yes. That is just of it. Yes. The fire shall come. The feeling we come. The feeling like you can't put another foot in front of the other. Pressure hit your left and right. Come. Come. Come, says the Lord, and I will give you rest. Come unto me and lay your burdens at my feet and I will give you rest. I will give you strength in your time of need, says the Lord. For my burden is light and my yoke is easy. So take my yoke upon me and rest in me. I will make a way for you. I will fight your battles for you. Trust me, says the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us, predestined us to the adoption as sons of, as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved Amen. that's a lot you know Ephesians 1 3 6 that's a, that's a passage to just sit down and meditate and meditate and leave it marinate in your spirit and leave it become real to you he said we are accepted it means to endure us with special honor, make accepted, we are highly favored. Because believers accepted in him, then they like him are beloved of God. God sees us just as he sees Jesus. That's a lot to wrap your mind your head around. But that's how he sees us. Because Jesus stand in the gap for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I must say. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus' death provides us full assurance. Because of his sacrifice, because the sacrifice was perfect, it never needs to be repeated. You don't have to do it again. It's done once and for all. For by one offering in Hebrews 10 14. For by one offering. He had perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Perfected. Perfected me to complete, to make perfect. So we are in a process of sanctification. But in Christ's eyes, we are perfect. Though we go into that process. Hallelujah. The use of perfected involves the completed cleansing of regeneration. This verse reveals the twofold nature of salvation. Look at the twofold nature of salvation. This is deep. The believer possesses positionally we stand in this position. Judicial standing of righteousness. So we're in a right standing. And second, a remaining need for practical, progressive holiness. I have to say that again. Let us think again. So we judicially in a position of righteousness. But we in a need for holiness and we are progressively becoming more and more. As we seek Him more, we become more and more holy like Him. So we don't condemn each other along the way. We pray one for each other. We show each other up. And we help each other to get there, to that place of holiness. Three factors within this verse make perfected absolute 
of justing the eternal security of the believer. The world itself, Hilu, involves completion. That's a big word, I guess. The bringing of something to its end. Second, the use of the Greek perfect tense subject that the perfection has been accomplished and its effects are continuing. There's a continual work in us. Allowing your life, this work is continuing in us. And the word forever expresses security for the believer. The death of Jesus Christ removes sin forever for those who belong to him. We are totally secure in our Savior. We are totally secure in our Savior. We need cleansing when and, when and if we fall into sin. But we need never to fear God's judgment on us because of our sin. As far as Christ Sacrifice is concerned, we have already been sanctified and perfected, which is why he had to sacrifice himself only once. You know that statement, Jesus paid it all. Jesus did it all. We don't have to go and do it again. But he did it all. Hallelujah. And so here we are coming to the end. John 10, 27, 30 says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. You cannot snatch us. When the river get rough and they go and get tough, know that you're in his hands and he can't keep you. Uncle them and stand. And after all you stand in, stand. Christ is going to be a true. First Peter 1, 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away. Let me that again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. You know what I mean to, begot, to have begotten us again? It's like we were born, we have been rebirth. We know we born again. And what we born into? Begotten us again to, into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an in inheritance. So now we have an inherit inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away it's in going no place it's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God to faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time so hold strain because times are going to get rough there will be tribulation in this world but there's good things in store for us. There are great things in store for the children of God. Faith not. Faith not. Because the end is that we win. Try in the tribulation, but we win. Last sentence. What a walk Jesus has done. Not only did he die, that we can have eternal life. Not only did he die, that we can be prosperous in this life. That's a whole other story there. Because some denomination said it like, you're supposed to suffer in this world and look towards eternal life for a good living. But Christ believes in his word that he says, that he prayed that you prosper, even as your soul prosper. And he said that the, 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 the castle on a thousand hill belongs to him. And he has given us an inheritance. 
And so we should be the richest people in this world. And it's not a prosperity gospel. There are some that come again he's teaching and they say they're teaching a prosperity gospel. But the gospel of God says that we should prosper and be in good health. So why is it a prosperity gospel? It's simply the gospel. Why don't you want your people to prosper? Hallelujah. I was saying what a walk Jesus has done. Let me wrap it up. Not only did he die that we can have eternal life, but look at this. He made provisions for us after he died. You know, like he just on the cross and that's it, you know. Hey, they say that we get into Pentecost on Sunday and all that coming up. Well, look what he do. John 14. Hallelujah. He didn't leave us to figure it out on our own. John 40, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance. And bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. What a God. He left us with the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us and cause us to continue to remember all that he has done for us and to help us along the way. This Holy Spirit dwells in us. This Holy Spirit dwells in the world today as Christ sits on the throne, seated on the right hand of God. The Holy Spirit is now the, 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 the working factor in this world that works with us. So we have to celebrate the Holy Spirit now and we have to look to the Holy Spirit for guidance. Yes, Hallelujah, he's the one that's going to help us. He's the one that's going to do the miracle. When you see sign of wonder break out, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. When you see healing break out, when you see situation that look like they were impossible, but they just come possible. That thing, that thing that look like they give you a headache. That, that building, that, that thing, that thing, watch the Holy Spirit. Watch the Holy Spirit. You think he's joking with them? When he's done, yeah, all you go do is say, oh my God, look what he did. And you know ain't nothing of your own because it was totally out of your control and totally out of your hands. But when the dust settled, God is the victor. And he's going to take care of his own. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And in that note, I'd like to thank you for allowing me this time to share God's word. Father God, I pray that this word takes root in the heart of all that heard. I come against the spirit of offense. There was no offense for anybody meant. And I bind that spirit even now. I pray that it takes root. I pray that yes. they feel on it. I pray that as 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 they go through the rest of the day, the rest of the week, this word marinates and some parts of it just jump in the spirit and leap and give them joy and give them revelation. Even me, because I'm eating it also and it's feeding me and it's sweet to my spirit. And that it brings us to a place where we know that we know that we know that this God we serve and the work that he's done for us is a finished work that no man can take away from us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. We're going to do a communion one time. As I said, the communion as I said, the communion simply is not a place to run from. It's a place to run to. If you love God and you know He died for you, come to Him. Everything may not be perfect, but this is the place. The word of God says to remember. I'll throw, I'll throw the scripture just like remember, remember, remember. And, and there's, a, there's a verse somewhere in the scripture that I don't teach you. Know, right? where, where the word the Lord said, like, when He come up, will He find faith in, this, in the earth? Will I find faith in the earth? And only how we won't find faith in the earth if we don't remember. And this is why the, the early saints, the early saints, they go from house to house breaking bread. 
So I'll be very glad to remember the work that Christ did in body was broken for us. That we may be healed, whole, and well. And I speak healing unto you as you take this. Amen. Let's eat in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And now this represents his blood. This blood that gives us access. This blood that gives us fellowship forever. The blood that makes us pure, whole, and holy. In Jesus' name, let's drink. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Were you blessed? Amen. Amen. It is finished. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus came on a mission and he accomplished his mission. Amen. Amen. So thank you, uh, Elder Williams, for sharing that word. And it is finished. Amen. Man's redemption now has been paid. Amen. Amen. And so we come to him. Come to Jesus, trusting in him, his name. Amen. For redemption, salvation, and the healing. He did all that. Then it is finished. And also in it is finished, he was obedient unto his father. Amen? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. So we too should walk in obedience. Amen? Amen? Wonderful. So we appreciate that word. Hallelujah. So next uh, Sunday is Pentecostal Sunday. So come. Come early. Hallelujah. To get the word. Hallelujah. I'm going to refresh her on the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So this time we think uh, we're going to do the offering. Amen. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Amen. And so Father, we just thank you as we give. Hallelujah. Into the kingdom of God, we just thank you, Lord God, that whatever we give is going to come back into our lives, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And the offering envelope, as my Abbas everyone come and join me. It says that God is able to give me much more than this. Amen. Let's say it one more time. God is able to give me much more. Whatever you release on your hand, God is able to give much more than this. And so, Father, we just thank you for your blessing upon your people as we give today. Lord God, we just thank you as we give out of our service, our work. Lord God, I thank you that you said that when we release it into your kingdom, Lord God, windows and doors and, 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 and yet the feet of others would come and you would come and give them press down, shaken together and running over. And heaven, what men can do, heaven will even do more for us in our finances in the name and the blood of you. We are praying that debt, our debts are being cancelled. We are praying every bill that we have in our life being paid. We thank you, Father, for uncommon and unexpected our income, hallelujah, and payments are coming in back and flowing into our lives in the name and the blood of Jesus. We are decreeing, we declare that God is so much. We are decreeing and we, we are declaring that God is too much yes. in Jesus' name. I shout. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're writing, uh, you check right to Global Life Church. And uh, those who are giving, you can give um, in, in the house to PayPal, paypal.me backslash Global Life Church. If you're giving online, and the, it's right there um, on this video. You can just click and just send in a donation. And we just thank you for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And those who are giving also, you can give in the back. Um, and by the financial folks in the back. They're giving by a card. And just carry your, uh, your envelope. And uh, put your name and your number. Those who have got a number. And uh, hallelujah. That will happen. Amen. 
And so I'm going to stretch our hands, God, towards you. Lord God, the offering. We pray, God, for your goodness and your mercy that's upon us. We pray, God, we thank you for all those who have given today into the offering today. And so, Father, we thank you that whatever we have, we have given will break the back of the enemy over our lives. In Jesus, everybody shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So at this time, we will just close out here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just close out. Oh, God, what's happening here? We pray, God, for your goodness, your mercy. Rest upon us, we pray. Abide with us. In Jesus' name, everybody shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you.